Chapter 4, The Great Cage Catastrophe The sun melted all the ice that Sunday afternoon. On Monday, it was cold and windy. March comes in like a lion, Dot had said, and she sure was right. I shivered in my cage despite the heavy blanket that Seth put over it before he and his mom took me out to the car. Being chilly is one thing, but a lion can be big trouble. Was trouble blowing its way toward room 26? The answer is yes, yes, yes. I just didn't know it yet. It was warm and cozy back in the classroom. I tried to tell Og about my weekend at Seth's house, but Mrs. Brisbane had to shush me. During the spelling test, I was so busy watching Seth that I didn't concentrate as hard as I should have. Seth did a lot less fidgeting than usual, and I noticed when he started jiggling in his seat, he'd glance over at me for a second and settle down. Good job. I graded my test and was shocked to see that I'd only gotten 79%. Say I usually got 100%. I'm not sure what grade Seth got, but he was smiling. Whatever grade Art got, it must not have been good, because A, he wasn't smiling, and B, the teacher asked him to stay in during recess. Everybody knew what that meant. Then we had a surprise visit from Principal Morales. He's the most important person at Longfellow School and a personal friend of mine ever since I spent a weekend at his house. Mr. Morales always wears a special tie. Today, his tie had colorful little houses all over it. I hope you don't mind me dropping in on Humphreyville, he said. I've heard so much about it. I had to see it for myself. He strolled past the tables, admiring the houses and the street signs, and ended up near my cage. I can't think of a better name than the one you've picked. Thanks, 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 I squeaked. As usual, it came out, squeak, 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 and everybody laughed. You are just in time for the next phase of our town building, said Miss Brisbane. Today, we're all going to get jobs. I heard gasps and murmurs around the room, and my mind was whirling. Mrs. Brisbane already had a job, being our teacher. I had a job, being the classroom pet, to help students learn about other species. As Ms. Mack said when she first brought me into room 26, you can learn a lot about yourself by taking care of another species. And it was true. Now I shared the job with Og, but I sometimes wondered whether there was anything new for my friends to learn now that I've been in class for a while. My mind was spinning a bit too fast, and I missed some of what Mrs. Brisbane was saying. Something about people in a community contributing by doing specific jobs. She'd already started writing names of jobs on the chalkboards as students called them out. Teacher, police officer, firefighter. That's what I want to do, Garth said, aiming an imaginary fire hose at AJ and making loud squirting sounds. Garth, Mrs. Brisbane used her warning, used her warning voice and kept on writing. Doctor, nurse dentist. Who needs a dentist? joked Kirk, folding his lips over his teeth so he looked completely toothless. Gail giggled, but Mrs. Br Brisbane ignored them both and kept going. Shopkeeper, farmer, builder. You left one job out, said Mr. Morales. School principal, and I'd better get back to my job before Mrs. Brisbane gives me a new one. Everyone laughed as he left, and the list-making continued. When things quieted down, the teacher made her own suggestions. I think we're forgetting a few other important jobs in a town. People to keep the electricity going, and run grocery stores, and gas stations. Car washes, said Seth. Car lots, added AJ. You can't wash cars until you buy one. All these interesting jobs had my head whirling. I dashed into my sleeping hut and quickly wrote the list down in my secret notebook. I am grateful that Miss Matt gave me the little notebook and pencil when she first brought me to room 26 before I met Mrs. Brisbane. After Ms. Mack moved to Brazil, she came back to visit and brought me a new notebook. 
although I worry about what I'll do when I fill this one up, so I will write extra, extra small. Finally, Mrs. Brisbane said, I think we have a good list here. Now, I'm going to assign jobs for Humphreyville. The room was in an uproar as students called out the jobs they wanted. I'll be fire chief, said Garth. Mandy frowned. I don't want to clean the dirty old streets or wash dishes. Mrs. Brisbane smiled. These aren't exactly the kinds of jobs we're going to have in Humphreyville. You will have class jobs based on the real jobs in a community. She walked over to the map, which was pulled down. Here's the list I've made. She rolled the map up, 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 and behind it on the chalkboard was a chart with a whole list of jobs I'd never even heard of before. Are you paying attention, Og? I squeaked to my neighbor. We're going to have new jobs. There was such a loud buzz in the room, Mrs. Brisbane had to say, Shush! Then, class, and quiet now, before everyone calmed down. Listen carefully, please, she said. The jobs will rotate on a weekly basis, so whatever your job is, the first week you'll have a different job next week. If you don't get the job you want the first time, you'll have another chance at it. You'll be graded on a point system. You'll get 10 points for doing a good job. I will add extra points for doing an especially good job and subtract points if you don't do a good job. Understand? Heads nodded yes around the room and a few hands shot up. Mrs. Brisbane called on Mandy. If we like our jobs, why can't we keep them? Mandy asked in her whiniest voice. Because I think you'll learn more by switching around. Mrs. Brisbane turned and began filling in names next to the jobs listed. Pencil Patrol, Heidi Hopper. Paper Monitor, A.J. Thomas. Door Monitor, Kirk Chen. Chalkboard Eraser, Gail Morgenstern. Energy Monitor, Art Patel. Line Monitor, Saya Nasiri. Plant Technician, Richie Rinaldi. Table Inspector, Mandy Payne. Animal Keeper, Miranda Golden. Teacher Assistant, Seth Stevenson. Homework Monitor, Tabitha Clark. Name After Name, job after job, each one sounding more interesting than the next. Imagine erasing the chalkboard at the end of every day or being Mrs. Brisbane's actual assistant. It was I was especially thrilled that Golden Miranda was going to be in charge of Og and me because she takes such good care of us. But not everyone was happy. Hands were raised. Kirk thought being the door monitor sounded boring. Heidi wanted to know what a pencil patrol person did. When she heard she had to make sure the students had sharp pencils when they needed them, she didn't complain. Mandy, on the other hand, did complain. When she found out, the table monitor was supposed to make sure everybody's workspace was neat. I don't want to clean up somebody else's mess. Mrs. Brisbane explained that she didn't have to clean up the mess. She just had to give a student a written notice saying that their workspace needs straightening. If someone's table didn't get straightened, she was to report that student to Miss Brisbane. It's an important job, the teacher explained. Mandy seemed satisfied. Any more questions? Mrs. Brisbane asked. Art slowly raised his hand. What's that energy monitor job? At recess, lunch, and at the end of school, you make sure the lights are turned off to save electricity. When everybody comes back, you turn the lights on. That sounds easier than being a table monitor, Mandy argued. Don't worry, the teacher replied. You'll all switch jobs at the end of the week. Okay, we'll start this afternoon. When it was time for recess, my friends put on their coats and rushed outside. Pay attention art stayed behind as Mrs. Brisbane had requested. Once my classmates had cleared out, she went over and sat down next to her. him. In her hand was art's spelling test. Art, about this F. My heart pounded. Art got an F. F as in failure. F as in flunking. F as in family being really mad if you bring home one of those on your report card. Art... I know math can be a problem for you, 
but you've always done better with your spelling. What happened? Art stared down at the table, shrugged his shoulders. I goofed up. Did you study? I forgot. F as in forgot to study? You've been forgetting a lot lately. What's on your mind? Art shrugged his shoulders again. I don't know. I just think about stuff I like. Mrs. Brisbane examined the elaborate house that Art had built, the one with the train tracks going through it. Stuff like building this house? Yeah, I like building things. And you're good at it. Look, I know you can do better than this. If I let you retake the test tomorrow, will you study for it tonight? Otherwise, I'll have to let your parents know about this F. Art perked right up. I'll study tonight, I promise. Mrs. Brisbane pushed back her chair and stood up. Don't disappoint me, Art. Tonight, what are you going to do? Study! He sounded convincing to me. Good, the teacher said with a smile. Now why don't you get your coat on and go out to recess? Art didn't waste any time grabbing his coat and dashing out of the room. After he left, Mrs. Brisbane stopped smiling. I hope you do study art, she said softly. After school, I stared at the job list I'd written down. Good thing I had, too, since Gail was such an excellent chalkboard eraser. Mrs. Brisbane had to stop her before she erased the list of jobs. On the other hand, Art had not exactly been a great energy monitor. He left the lights on at the end of the day. I wish he'd pay more attention. Usually, I would have been glad the lights were on so I could study my notebook, but I had something else on my mind. I turned to my neighbor. Ugh, can you hear me? I heard the faintest splashing of water. At least I knew he was listening. I've been thinking about this job thing, I squeaked. The splashing got louder. My small hamster voice couldn't be heard over the noise, so I opened my cage lock that doesn't lock. It looks like it's locked when a human closes my door, but I can easily open it from the inside. No one knows about it except Og. Thank goodness. I couldn't have helped my friends and had so many adventures without that good old lock. I scampered over to Og's house. Our friends have helping kinds of jobs, like taking care of us. Even if we can't erase the chalkboard or turn off the lights, there must be something useful we can do. Boing! Og jumped up aimingly high, alarmingly high. Mrs. Brisbane didn't even think of us, so we're going to have to find jobs of our own. Real jobs, like turning off the lights. Boing, boing! Og jumped even higher. Good! You want a job, too. Is that what you're saying? Boing, boing, boing! My froggy friend was quite frantic, which was certainly unusual for him. I didn't realize that he was actually trying to warn me until Aldo hurried into the room, pulling his cart. What are all the lights doing on? A waste of energy, he grumbled. My heart was thumping so loudly. Aldo could probably hear it. I couldn't let anyone discover the secret about my lock. I madly dashed back to my cage and almost made it, too, but it's hard to stay ahead of Aldo. Hey, buddy, hold on there. His big hand reached down and picked me up. What are you doing out of your cage? This classroom could be a dangerous place for a small fellow like you. Somebody could have squashed you or something. He gently placed me back in my cage and closed the door, checking to see that the lock was firmly locked. It seems okay, he said, but just to be safe, I'll give you some extra protection. He searched around until he found a large paper clip, which he straightened out. Then he bent it around the door of my cage. Eek! I squeaked. I was really locked in now. Aldo stroked his mustache thoughtfully. Somebody must have left your door open. I wonder who took care of you today. He thought for a minute, then took out a piece of paper and sat down to write a note to Mrs. Brisbane. I better tell her that whoever is supposed to take care of you didn't do a very good job. I swallowed hard. Golden Miranda had the job of animal keeper, and no one took better care of pets than she did, even if she personally owned a scary dog named Clem. 
No, 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 I squeaked, trying to make Aldo understand that he was making a big mistake. Not Miranda. For once, Aldo didn't get it. I know, pal. It must have been pretty scary being out of the cage like that. Mrs. Brisbane will take care of it. He folded the note and put it on her desk. My stomach was bumpy and jumpy the way it feels when I have to ride the school bus with somebody. Aldo finished cleaning and ate his dinner, but I was so upset. I wasn't even interested in the carrot he offered me. Aldo got up and pushed his cart toward the door. Lights out, guys. Gotta save that energy. After he left the and the room was dark again, I squeaked to Og. Thanks for trying to warn me, Augie. Next time I'll pay more attention. Boing, boing, he replied. I've got to get over to Mrs. Brisbane's desk and throw that note away, I told him. He twanged in agreement. I went right to work on unbending the paper clip. I used my paws, my teeth, ouch, and even my tiny pencil. I wiggled it, jiggled it, pushed it, and pulled it. But by the time the sun came up, I was still locked in. I'd failed Gordon, Golden Miranda, a person who would never do anything to harm me. The same does not apply to her dog, however. No wonder Mrs. Brisbane didn't give me a real job. As a classroom hamster, I deserved an F for forgetting to pay attention to everything I was supposed to do. Employment picture bright for Humphreyville. Students start a variety of jobs today. The Humphreyville Herald.